What's going on guys and welcome back to the video. Welcome back to the channel, I should say. It's a bright, beautiful day. Pull the Challenger out the garage because I just haven't driven it in a long time. And if you keep uh, track of my uh, Instagram or if you follow me on Instagram, uh, we got some new status harnesses. So here's the old ones, got the black ones. And came out with a new color, April 1st. And uh, I'm trying to unlock the car. I'm pretty sure my key is dying. This is proof, I don't use it, there it goes. I don't use it enough, but check out these orange status harnesses. They completely match the interior of the car. The it's interior like, of the Challenger is pretty much, I mean, it's not really much I could do or that I really want to do to the interior because I kind of like the simplicity of it. I love the orange seats, love the orange harnesses. Now, the Daytona, the interior, I'm not too happy with, right? I've said it a million times. So if you look here, got the black pillars. Everything's black on the inside. Got the black headliner. And I love that look. The Daytona now has got that two-tone tan upper half, black lower half. So I went ahead and got some uh, suede material for the headliner. And I'm going to go ahead and paint all the pillars in the, chal in the Challenger, in the Daytona, uh, the same black color. So... Little details like that that I want to tackle while I have time now and it's not too hot outside before summer arrives and starts cooking us here in Texas. So I'm actually on my way to AutoZone to get some headliner uh, adhesive. I don't have any, so going to have to get some of that, but I want to drive the Challenger because it's a beautiful day out. I haven't driven it. <laughs> Got to put some miles on it. So let me go get that stuff and then we'll get started painting uh, those interior bits. All right, so I'm back in the garage. I ended up getting two cans of paint. Uh, the first one's a duplicolor uh, vinyl and fabric where it looks like it's a gloss finish. And then I got a matte finish because I don't know how matte this is really gonna come out. And I wanna make sure I get a finish that matches the rest of the interior on the Ram as much as possible. Before we start getting paint, we also need, I got it right here, where is it? I also got a can. And I got this from when I did my headlights on the Challenger about a year ago when I painted the uh, housings black. So uh, it's a plastic adhesion promoter. So I'm going to need this because the curves and the cracks and these handles, uh, you want the paint to adhere to it as much as possible. And before you do that, uh, you want to clean the parts. So I did that with a little bit of Dawn dish detergent. If it's good enough for ducks, it's good enough for my interior. So baby ducks use it, so my interior could use it. And I've got the part right here in the sun drying. So before I even spray anything, that's the handle that I removed from the uh, driver's side when I put the pillar gauges in the ram. So I'm gonna test the two colors, see which one I like the most on that before I paint anything else on the interior of the ram. Because if I don't like it, I'm not gonna do it. Um, the other thing I got was this can of uh, headliner adhesive. And that's for the uh, headliner when we get to that part. But Right now, I'm uh, gonna dry this piece up, make sure it gets nice and dry. I uh, hit it with the adhesion promoter and hit it with the paint, see which one I like the best. All right, so I let the piece get a little heat from the sun and uh, put the adhesive promoter on there and I sprayed the top half with the matte finish and the bottom half with the gloss finish. Now I put it out in the sun again to get a little heat. Again, this is just my test piece. So I sprayed it uh, rather quickly uh, so far. Uh, almost look identical. So <laughs> I'm just kind of letting it dry, make sure it gets completely, completely dry so I can get that accurate look at the uh, finish that the paint is to show to you. All right, so this top half, to about right here is matte. This bottom half is the uh, gloss. So, it's a very, I mean, very small difference. You can see this is, oh, it's already dry. This is shinier, more of a matte finish. So, let's go ahead and compare it. All right, so I'm using the dash for comparison. There's quite a bit of light coming in right here. So I'm gonna hold it up and you'll see that it's almost, they're both really accurate. I guess it's more about what kind of finish I want. The doors are a little more. Honestly, 
to me, it looks like the matte finish is a little closer to just the sheen of the, uh, the dashboard here. So I think I'm gonna go with matte. The glossy is almost a little too shiny, especially when you compare it to around here, this part. Black is almost too shiny and these are like not really black they're almost like a gray but there is no gray this uh this matte finish is going to be the winner all right i'm actually pretty happy with that uh the matte finish it looks like the one that is definitely gonna be closer to the dash uh and the rest of the interior so i'm gonna play some musical cars here get the q50 out of the driveway so i can get the daytona in there so i can start ripping apart the interior and we can do all the plastic pieces today and maybe tomorrow or the following day uh, i'll go ahead and pull the headliner and well actually i am going to pull the headliner today because there's that little computer that tells you north south and your miles per gallon up on the uh, headliner i want to paint all that black as well so uh, i'll probably pull the headliner today but i won't get to that today i'm going to go ahead and focus on cleaning and painting these interior pieces first so i'm going to get started all right guys so just keep things simple this is the entire passenger side you got the uh a crap handle and you go over to the b pillar so a pillar i lied b pillar the b pillar is the one with the uh passenger seat belt this little sleeve goes in there that's how you move the seat belt uh, up and down then you've got the seat belt cover that goes over to that this is the rear seat belt cover and then you've got the uh, b pillar handle for the uh, rear passenger so it's best to do it like this in a couple different pieces clean everything you can see it's dirty then dry everything, give a little heat, prime everything, and then paint it. And this is, of course, the seat pillar in the rear. Sadly, the only thing that's gonna stay tan is the buckles on the actual seat belts because in order to take those off, you have to move the seat belt buckle out of the actual seat belt, and then you gotta remove uh, all that. And I really don't wanna mess with the seat belts or anything like that. So I'm thinking in the future, if I can find a parts ram or something with those pieces in black, usually the newer rams already have those in black, I'll swap the seat belts over. A lot of uh, Challenger guys do that with the red seat belts and black interior from Hellcats and such. So it's gonna be a little bit of hunting, but I'd rather not mess with the seat belt and the safety they provide. And by ripping them apart to try to paint these pieces black, I'm just gonna have to live with those being tan for the meantime. So let me get started. So I want to finish this entire passenger side before I move on to the uh, driver's side and the overhead center console. So let's get to it. So I washed everything up, including the centerpiece right there. It was just for a little Phillips head to take out the computer, nothing too difficult. So I got all the other pieces drying up now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the uh, headliner out of the truck. Show you guys where we're at. So, oh, another thing. I'm not gonna paint these because they cover the seat belt so then this piece would be black and then this piece would still be tan so I'm just gonna save the effort and not paint them so not gonna paint these I am gonna paint the bezel that goes over here uh, above the center of the headliner but as you can see got everything out now we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the headliner and uh, set it off to the side because this is the first thing that needs to go back in before we start putting in the uh, rest of the interior Quick update, get everything drying. Put it on the sun so it gets some heat to it. And if there's any touch up spots, I'll go ahead and touch it up afterwards. So right now I'm doing the 
three gauge pillar. Again, it's important to put that adhesive promoter, especially in curves. This stuff does say it has got the built-in adhesive promoter, but anytime there's hard corners or curves, you wanna make sure you definitely apply that, let it dry, and then apply your paint. So I had to let, I had to steam. All right guys, so it's been a few days and I have wrapped up the interior of the Ram. But I got in a rush because I wanted to finish because I had some other plans I needed to attend to. So I didn't film putting everything back together. And since it's a few days later, I actually just put the uh, bump steer kit on the uh, Daytona. So I eyeballed the alignment as best I could. Now my friend Jose, uh, Street Chair Performance with the Orange Daytona. You might have seen us together at the Triple P uh, truck show down in San Antonio. Say so he's got a really good video on how to install the uh, bump steer kit. So I just followed his video, installed it. Got everything buttoned up. Now I'm about to go on my first test drive with the uh, bump steer kit. I can already tell you when I was turning the steering wheel, it's a lot tighter. But before I go on that test drive, I wanna show you guys the interior that I finished up. All right, so here everything is. Blacked out, black dash, everything black except the visors. I think I'm gonna have to take those to an upholstery shop so they can wrap them in suede as well. You can see the uh, suede roof and all the black pillars. Minus the buckles like I spoke about uh, when I was first putting it all together. I did get the hooks in the back black, but not these front ones because they fell in my wash bucket and I totally forgot about it. But yeah, suede headliner, black interior. Everything's starting to look a lot nicer now. Hey guys, so what I'm about to do now is go on the first uh, test drive with the bump steer kit on. Steering already feels tighter. Pretty, pretty excited about this. Let me go ahead and back up out of the garage and close the garage. No weird noises when I'm steering. There's this nice road, like out of my neighborhood. And if you ever want to test for noises, it is the best road in the world because I'm telling you, it's like Armageddon hit this sucker. I'm waiting for the school bus to walk by. In other words, the road is horrible, but it's good to test out if you got a new suspension, if you want to test out any noises or anything like that. So that's what I'm about to go do. Y'all say what's up to the Jeep? Teddy bear? You holding it down. Don't let nobody mess with the Jeep, Teddy. Nobody. All right, let's back this baby up. This mother traffic coming in. Ooh, the Chally. I know you guys missed the Chally big time, but I promise you, got some big things coming for it. Oh yeah, this is already way nicer. Way nicer. Spoiler alert, I still haven't plugged these freaking sensors in. I have everything to plug them in and I just have not done it. Oh yeah, now we're talking. I'm not on that bumpy road yet, but it's a lot nicer. I can already tell. I'm pretty happy already. I still need to go get this bad boy line though. My steering is a little crooked. Yeah, it's still, the steering wheel's still going towards the right. So that's my steering wheel going straight. I put it straight, I'm gonna go left. So, gotta get this thing aligned, big time. Man, this is so much better. I, I said in my last video, the only thing that would top off lowering your truck even better is getting that bump steer kit. Dude, get one. Get one, this thing, I mean, mine's my Cricket steering wheel right now. Night and day difference, totally worth it. That was the one thing I hated was like, hitting these bumps and then just everything felt loose, you know what I mean? Like it really felt wallered out. Like this truck's been used and abused, <laughs> but now it's feeling, she feels good now. Everything's nice and tight. Definitely recommend, 1010, recommend Yelp review. N, famous, that's the letter N, famous metal lab for this bump steer kit. I'll put a description of the link below, as well as a link to Jose's video on how to install the kit. Uh, can't go wrong following that. Uh, those instructions. Listen, got a lot of really great things coming for the Challenger if I plan everything accordingly. Uh, the reason why I haven't been messing with the Challenger is because there's one autocross coming up in a couple of weeks and I really want to go. Again, no changes done to the Challenger. I want to go get some seat time in it. Uh, I got some new upper control arms that I want to throw at it after this next autocross. Again, I don't want to change anything. I really like the way the car was last time. I hope it's dry, I hope it's sunny because it's going to make it for a really good autocross day. Uh, after that, I should have a bulk of the new parts for the Challenger, and uh, we'll start phase like 63.5 on the Challenger uh, to include those upper control arms, um, 
the rear alignment I wanted just a little bit. It's got too much positive camber. No, I lied. It's got too much negative camber. That's the issue with the cars. Uh, so I want to add a little uh, negative camber, a little positive camber. I'm going back and forth here. It's got too much negative camber. I want to add some positive camber into the rear so when you accelerate in the squats, we have more grip. Right now, there's so much negative camber that when you accelerate in squats, you have even less grip. But that's for the future, guys. Keep a lookout for those videos. Uh, for now, it's going to wrap up today's video. If you guys like these videos, leave a comment below. Hit that like button. And if you love these videos, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys. Peace out.